That's right, Marissa. The New Hampshire Department of Transportation says it did a study into whether I-95 qualified for a median back in 2012. They say it didn't meet the requirements for barriers back then, though. Wednesday's crash on I-95 in Greenland killed two people. It's the latest deadly crash involving vehicles crossing the highway's open median. There's a, a lot of bases to cover um, with something that magnitude and that gravity. Uh, we want to make sure that we do everything right. In 2021, a similar crash on 95 in Seabrook killed one person. Back then, the New Hampshire DOT told News 9 it uses median barriers when required by national guidelines. On 95, one would be needed if the median was 30 feet wide or less, but on much of the highway, it's wider than that, 60 feet or more. Something like this where somebody just goes totally out of their lane, in fact, off the road really, uh, into oncoming traffic, that it's, it's kind of hard to predict. But David Reich with the National Road Safety Foundation says there are still simple ways to make sure you're staying safe. Seatbelts are so important important because even as bad as a crash like that may be, if you've got your seatbelt on, that that exponentially improves the chances of you surviving. it. State Police Lieutenant Commander Joseph Ronke adds that speed is a big factor in crashes like these. And that's what we're trying to message out to the to the motoring public to uh, take a breath when you're driving, slow down, um, make sure you have enough time to get to where it is that you're supposed to be going and, and don't rush, be courteous to those around you and, and drive with due caution. Now tonight, NHDOT says they have no specific plans or funding in place for road improvements, and they either committed to monitoring safety along both I-95 and all state roadways. In the studio, John Schoenheider, WMUR News 9.